All right. Hi. How is everybody? Uh, I'm Tim. Actually, I'll fix this for you. Uh, I'm from Australia, so. That was pretty. That was a pretty corny joke. Uh, I'm allowed to do that because I'm actually from Australia, so that's all right. Uh, CSSConf. God, it's been such a big day today. It's been such a good day. I feel I feel so privileged to be uh, amongst like the speakers that we've had. Uh, it's it's truly special, and everyone has been like so insanely helpful. I had this weird moment. Uh, earlier today where my, I didn't bring like a German converter plug and my laptop was getting, getting low and Mac started doing like power saving things uh, and eventually just stopped responding and I had to like do that thing where you hold the power button down and it felt really weird. It was like I was smothering it with a pillow. It's like, shh, it's going to be all over soon. Uh, that was... Oh, that was a bit strange. Uh, so there's like, yeah, there's been such a huge variety of talks today. Uh, this is this is a little bit of a different talk um, because you're definitely not going to learn anything. If anything, it's kind of like an unlearning, unlearning kind of talk. Uh, I've definitely seen the sketch notes from my talks before, and it's just basically an empty page with my name written in the center. Um, so take your thinking caps off. Uh, we're going to go on a great, great adventure. I want to talk about fun. I want to talk about uh, having fun with the code and having fun with the tools that we have, because we have so much power and we have so much uh, ability to create such crazy cool things. You know, I'm, I'm happy to like, talk about CSS all day, and I can talk about uh, kind of like the frameworks and stuff. But in a weird way, I kind of feel like I'm talking about building a kite, and I'm not actually talking about flying the kite. And flying the kite is the best thing. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what this talk is about. This is my qualification, CSS for babies. That's where I learned everything. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is this, is this kind of framework. I, you've kind of seen these like star wipes going on. Actually, everything in this whole talk is epileptic. I'm sorry. Uh, whoop, I really like it. I just put, oh, there it goes. Well, there we go. Here's the CSS for that. It's using a mask image uh, with an SVG, which is fantastic. It kind of gives you some cool things, like I can change it to hearts. I can do a heart wipe, which is really nice. Like a thumbs up, maybe some subliminal messaging there. Like, Tim's a cool guy. Tim's a cool guy, Tim's a cool guy, Tim's a cool guy. Uh, I, put, I put a mustache in there for Nick, actually, which I thought was nice. Yeah. Um, I, also, I also put a donkey in there, which is technically an ass wipe. So I was pretty proud of myself there. I hit my new immaturity levels. Uh, but let's, let's stick with the star. Uh, I found this great video. It was actually a, a tribute to star wipes in a star wipe format, which was, which was kind of like the inspiration to want to wanna make a presentation framework, because there's so many. There's Reveal.js, there's like, I don't know, there's a thousand systems to do these things, but none of them offered star wipes, which, which was a little bit distressing. Uh, anyway, this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say fun. Like, I, I really like to run into something and kind of hit it head on, really full ball, and then kind of start exploring it and start going like a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper uh, to see kind of where it can go and what, what we can kind of do with with what we're creating. Um, in school, school in Australia was pretty laid back. Um, I was kind of like a little bit of a lazy kid. Uh, and I, I don't know, CSS is, is something that you can kind of use lazily and you can use aggressively and powerfully. And I, you know, sometimes I find myself leaning kind of on the lazy side. Uh, but it was also a great way to kind of describe things. So here's me. Uh, this is a weird format. That's the number. I decided I was probably about the 63rd thousandth Tim Holman in the world, uh, which is, you know, which is nice. I'm about 7,000 pixels tall, probably. Um, two, two, yeah, 2,000 wide. I've got some padding now that it's summer. Well, summer's ending, but hopefully I can get rid of that padding. This is kind of what I did with my assignments. In school, you had to submit assignments. Like, it's three pages, or four pages, or five pages, or 10 pages. It was particularly bad. Uh, and you could kind of cheat the system. So like, box items and border box, it's a piece of paper, of course. Uh, first, increase the padding. Like, then you're going to have less words in each line. It's going to start going faster. Next, increase the word spacing. Suddenly, like one page is at least two pages now. Uh, increase the letter spacing when you really like slip that one through the teachers. Uh, it's a good way to do it, and it's the lazy way. It's the lazy approach. It's the Tim Holman tried and trusted <laughs> method uh, for for development. Um, so I kind of wanted to put something like that into this, into this presentation. I was kind of like, oh, you know, I've got to talk for, for 30 minutes or so. Uh, what's like the, the padding decrease that I can put on this? So like into the framework here, I kind of build a system to like slow down the transition. So I can really like 
play it slow, make sure I get the time that I'm kind of going for. Um, yeah, you know, and then I can speed it up again. It can be like Fast and the Furious. Oh, that's not fast enough. Vin Diesel, that's me when I'm developing. Uh, I liked, I actually really like these CSS puns, and there's like a, there's a, a ton of them online. There was a few like Reddit threads, and this is like a nice one, Lego display block. I like it because I understand it. That's the main thing. <laughs> Titanic float nun. <laughs> yeah. It's, in bad, it's, it's not in bad taste. It's so old now. They didn't even know about CSS back then. Uh, periodic display table. That's a good one. Uh, muffins ready, overflow wide visible. If I made them, you'll never get to that status. Um, Chuck Norris's color is badass, naturally. These are really cool. I'm from Australia. That's the, that's the rotation that I have naturally in my eyes. Everyone's sitting on the roof right now. Um, this was kind of me when I found these, these puns. I was like, I'm going to be great at this. I'm like, I can be a funny guy. I can make some weird jokes. Uh, and all of them turned out to be really depressing, actually. So like, here's me. Here are my abs. Display none. <laughs> here's me. Here's my beard. I've got like a patchy SVG mask over it for the rest of my life. Uh, this is my regular transition speed, like, mm, you see, that's pretty accurate. Uh, when Seamless arrives at the door, bam, I'm fast as anything. Do you have Seamless here? Probably not. Like, when Chinese delivery. When I'm preparing for this, slow as anything. I kind of like really got bogged down. I kind of got bogged down building the system. This is me. When, I, when I'm making something and I start to think of ideas, do you ever get that feeling when you're, when you're developing something and your, your head is just going off? It's like, if I wasn't developing this, these are the other things that I would be developing. That's like me all the time. I'm just like, oh, I'm building this, but wouldn't it be cool if I wasn't doing this and I could do something else? And I just want to start something, start something, start something, start something, start something. So when I, made this, you know, I started to make this presentation to talk about uh, fun with CSS, and I spent most of the time building the framework, which is, which is now what I'm talking about. Uh, I kind of have like, this nervousness when I'm developing. I don't know where it came from, to be honest. Uh, probably like untrustworthy Australian internet, where I just like, save everything. I'm just like, save, 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 save. Three times. I press the Save button at least three times on every file that I want to save. Uh, I built this into here, so like, every slide I can kind of save my, oh, there we go. I can save, yeah, save my status, save where I'm at, keep going. It's a nice, you know, it's a nice little fallback. Here's me clapping, applauding myself uh, like Clint Geoffrey. So this was like my list of fears when, when I was giving a, a conference talk. Like everybody kind of has like a few little fears. Uh, obviously the first one was that I wasn't filling the time, uh, which, which I can defeat by slowing the transition, slowing the slides down a lot. I might do it, you know, I've got a clock here. If I'm, if I'm not feeling in time, that's definitely what's going to happen. Everything's going to break down, you know, I can't really do that much about that, but I can definitely, like, save my position on every single slide, every single time. Uh, and the next one was, like, that I'm going to forget what I'm going to say, uh, which is, you know, that's a huge fear, right? Like, public speaking is a huge fear. You come up and you're like, oh, oh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? So I needed to build in speaker notes, obviously, to this, this presentation system. Uh, so I did it like this, you know, here, here up come my hands, you can actually all see it. Uh, you know, it's kind of nice, I'm like, if I have trouble seeing things, you guys can see it as well. Uh, it, was a, you know, it, was a, it was a nice system. That was actually, that was Papyrus, if anyone asked. I actually found somebody the other day combined Comic Sans and Papyrus into a new super font. <laughs> Move over Helvetica, Papyrus Sans is here. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, this was the CSS that I used to make my hands look less ugly in there. A little bit of blur, you know, Photoshop is dead. We already learned it today. A little bit of brightness, a little bit of grayscale. Take some color out of these bad boys. Uh, maybe I'm born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> All right. Really, I should just like blow them completely, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have to deal with you wouldn't have to deal with those. Hands are really weird when you look at them up close, and especially when you're developing, looking at hands. Uh, I kind of had this problem when I built the system to to give me to give me notes, where I was kind of like rehearsing and practicing the speech as uh, practicing the talk as you do, uh, and I kind of found that I wasn't actually learning it. Like I was, you know, I was kind of falling back into those lazy ways, and I was cheating again. So like every slide, I'd be like, "What's that? Like this? You know, this doesn't really make sense." I'm like, "What was I trying to do there?" Uh, and and of course, I would like get out the hands, and it's like, "Oh, why why can't I stop cheating?" So I kind of had to build in this thing where. Uh, after, I, after I try to cheat for a few times, it starts messing with the text. Uh, you know, it gets, gets worse. It gets worse. Like projecting. You know, that would be bad. And then eventually it's like, you're, you're over. You're done, Tim. You're, you're in big trouble. 
Uh, I kind of like this concept. I kind of liken it to Bil Bilbo in the ring, like he kind of relies on this thing and it just, it just kind of goes a little bit crazy in the end. Uh, and the concept of like computers getting mad at us and, and kind of like intentionally building something to, to hurt people and to ruin people's experience, I kind of really like that idea. I think it's like a weird way of thinking when you're, when you're trying to make an experience negative or when you're trying to make something a little bit worse or trying to make something a little bit weirder and a little bit more wrong uh, because nobody really does that that much. Uh, and passwords are a big one. Passwords is like a... Well, it's kind of like a pet peeve of mine where you put in a password and it's like, oh, your password is too, it's too simple. Like, that's kind of an insult. It's like, Tim, you're a simple person. You can't, you can't remember anything else. Uh, and I kind of like, feel a little bit hurt by that every single time I get it. I feel like my password 10 years ago, if I use it again now, it's like the technology's changed. We understand that, right? The technology's changed. You can crack passwords faster. So I've kind of, my password's got weaker over time. Uh, and, and I kind of wanted to play around with that. This is a website that I built. Uh, with a friend, it's called the Passive Aggressive Password Machine. You know, my, my, my path to world dominance, of course, uh, evolves around having my own password algorithm uh, to, tech, to detect strength. So when you're kind of talking, the, the idea was like, you're kind of being talking down to, like, really, you call that a password? Do you even know what a password is? That's what I feel when I say my password speak. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> my mom's used that one on me before, and it stings the most. Right to your core. You never, you never really forget that one. Try harder, like blah, blah, blah. You know, it gets, it gets you know, I got some numbers in there. Uh, in the end, it's like, you're not even going to remember this password. <laughs> That's OK, because at least you're proud of me now. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of get like a little bit, yeah, I kind of get a little bit down when I see these things. And, and it's kind of nice to, to, to kind of explore them. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you get a little bit sad. Maybe I'm making some jokes in the presentation and they're not quite going over as well. So I kind of built in motivational notes. So, like, if I press M, it's like, Tim, you can do it. Amazing. Like, you're doing great. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> it's so nice, isn't it? I feel really good now. And then I was like, maybe, Tim, you're going to get a little bit over. You're going to get a little bit too on top. So I have some demotivational ones as well. All right, let's keep it happy, let's keep it happy. Uh, I kind of got a lot, I got pretty distracted building this whole thing. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the crux of it. I built in x-ray mode, whoops, so it goes all kind of x-ray. If you try to get speaking notes in x-ray mode, you get skeleton hands. <laughs> that's nice, that's a must in anything, really. I'll turn x-ray off. Uh, I can like, I don't know if you can see it here, I can like beach ball, beach ball my mouse. You know, just in case I need to have some unenforced technical difficulties and get out of here. <laughs> uh, it's a weird thing when you just kind of go down the rabbit hole and there's nothing really stopping you. You just kind of get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Strange. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's Starwipe, uh, the, the presentation system of the future. But I should, I should move on from there. Um, but is this fun? Is this the kind of fun thing? This is the stuff that I enjoy making the most. Like, I, I don't know, there's nothing really holding you back. There's no one telling me, there's no one telling anyone here really, like, this is the wrong way to, to kind of enjoy yourself and to make weird things and kind of like surprise and delight everybody that you're, that you're going through. Uh, I, this is a good slide, isn't it? No notes there. <laughs> I was a bit of a prankster in school, uh, and, and kind of as, as I've grown up, you know, the, the pranks kind of evolve, and they use, like, in school you have, like, a pencil or a glue stick, and you put it on someone's chair, and it's the funniest thing. Uh, and and as, you know, as you kind of grow into a new set of tools, your, your pranks evolve a little bit. Uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with CSS that's the equivalent of chucking a slice of cheese on someone's face. Um, there's this file, I don't know if anyone's seen it, uh, custom CSS, and it lives in the Chrome, uh, lives in like the Chrome like, root of your, of your laptop, uh, and any CSS that you put in this file will run on every single page that person goes to. Uh, it's, it's fantastic, it's really, really... <laughs> When I found this, like, I ran straight to the bathroom and giggled for like five minutes. I hadn't even done anything. I was like, oh, we're going to have so much fun here. 
Uh, so we wrote like a little bash script that, that would inject whatever I wanted into this, into this. And when somebody leaves their laptop open, I would kind of go onto their computer, and I'd you know, get it out of GitHub, and I'd just paste it into a terminal, close the terminal, delete the history of the browser, and it's completely gone. Uh, and this is oh, it's so good. So custom CSS, it is God's gift to man. Uh, so this is a good one. This was the, the hue rotation. <laughs> Put it on everything. Forget it. Throw out the rule book. There is no rule book. Uh, you know, we understand this thing. We could probably look at it and go, oh, something strange is happening here, but I don't quite tell what it is. Uh, but, you know, if you do that to your sister or your workmates, no idea. Here's like, I mean, I, I include that little effect. What? If it loads. This is it. You've got to do it really subtle. Like, you have to have, like, this is 10 seconds. This is too fast. You don't want to do it in 10 seconds. You want to do it over 100 seconds. You want somebody on Google to just be like, a little bit questioning if they're going crazy. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Uh, this is a good one. A lot of things use the class and ID logo. You can rotate them. And this is kind of a broad, this is what I call like a broad spectrum prank, really. Uh, because this is, this is kind of, it doesn't ruin your experience. You're going to see it, and you're going to be on Google, and you're going to see the logo kind of rotating. And you're like, oh, Google's doing one of those things today. <laughs> yeah? it, must be, it must be like the invention of the merry-go-round or something. Um, Netflix, it just, I just kind of like put this on for a while, tried it out. Uh, and you kind of forget when you've done this to somebody because it's not that harmful. But every now and then, like I've had this like passing, like I've kind of overheard it in the office. It's like, have you noticed that all the websites online are spinning? <laughs> like, it's been happening for the past few weeks. I'm like, oh fuck, I left it on this guy's, <laughs> I left it there. Uh, Google's the same. Logo, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice subtle, Subtle messing. Sometimes you can just make everything grayscale. There's suddenly, everyone thinks that they're a little bit colorblind. This is cruel. And it's kind of especially strange, because if you open Firefox, everything's fine. You go back to Chrome, and you're like, oh, my Chrome is just screwed. Everything's black and white. Doesn't, doesn't make any sense. This is what I actually tried to do first. I, I tried to, yeah. It's like, oh, Tim, you've gone too far. You've gone too far. Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, I, was, I was so excited. I particularly like this because <laughs> the, the, uh, it refuses to recognize papyrus as a font in the first place. <laughs> it's just got to sit there in the white. Why would that happen? I mean, papyrus sans is fine. Uh, just make all the links hot pink. You know, just a subtle thing. That's harmless. Uh, you know, do what you want. I kind of like this idea again of like, making experiences worse for people. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you can kind of unlock some new ideas there, and you can kind of like find these new treasure troves of, of weirdness, and, and you, you get a little bit of perspective as well. You're kind of going down this rabbit hole of, of making something worse, and you can kind of get a good perspective and think like, oh, you know, everything's not that bad, really. Uh, this is a great image of a pop-up. Uh, you know, everyone has seen these on the web. Google's kind of penalizing, for, penalizing your, your search ranking for hitting a web page with these pop-ups. This is like demonic spawn of a pop-up. You know that because it's got sound, one. That's like checkbox, amazing. It's kind of selling itself. It like consumes the whole screen. I've had to build pop-ups like this before. I've worked in advertising. Uh, I, I don't fully believe in like the, the self-righteous web developer where you're like, I absolutely refuse to build this because it's your job. Sometimes you have to do these things. Uh, uh, and I kind of like this uh, experience of making things worse. Again, I just keep saying it. I'm a bad person. Um, social media is kind of spamming is, is a good example of that. And this is, this is a website that I built trying to think, like, you know, the pop-up will come up and we say, like, tweet this page. We need you to share this, like, 1,000 Facebook likes. We need likes. Uh, and I kind of built this library. It's got, like, a little bit of subliminal uh, messaging in the background. And wherever you move your mouse on the web page, the, the tweet button actually <laughs> sticks to it. That's 54,000 tweets right there. <laughs> I actually have to filter it out of my feed because it's annoying as fuck. It's really frustrating. Uh, I haven't seen this in the wild, but I actually am convinced that it's a very effective mechanism. Uh, I should go to the next like, spam conf and be, you know, report my findings.
It's weird like that. It's, it's making things worse. It makes you kind of understand that, oh, you know, everything is okay. Interaction's a big one. Uh, this is a website that I built uh, for a friend who, who has this app uh, called Authentic Weather. And it's kind of like a weather app that is, is a little bit brutally honest. It's like, it's fucking raining right now. Look outside. You don't need to know the weather. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like a simple site. You know, it's not, it's not too crazy. It's got some, like, Instagram things. Uh, get your sunglasses. It's very cussy. Uh, and and this, was, this was kind of a nice website to build. It didn't look particularly bad. Uh, it wasn't... Oh, that tweet button's in the wrong place. Whoever built that is terrible. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really like represent a big challenge, but it's kind of nice to build. Uh, and, and I kind of like to ask myself whenever I'm building something, like, what can I get out of this? Uh, whether I'm going to go in a weird direction and make something worse, or I'm going to make something better. Um, what, what small amount can I gain? Where can I inject some creativity? Where can I have some fun? Um, and this was the button. Oh, let me zoom in on it. This was like the blue buttons on, that, on, the, on the site that said, like, click this and you can download the app, or click this and you can uh, get the Android app. Uh, and, and I kind of wanted to like, put something fun in there, so I kind of injected like, a little bit of a story into this button. So when you hover, it's like, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Just keep hovering. It's a good life, being a button. The work is hard, but enjoyable. Yeah, it's great. Save me. It's nice, right? It doesn't do it doesn't do any harm. Like it, it's it's you know some people can kind of breeze by this. It's like that little bit of surprise and delight and that little bit of fun. Uh, and I could take this out of the website and I could put it on like a code pen or I could put it kind of in an isolated place. And I feel happy that it exists. And I feel like a little bit proud that it's you know that it's there and that it's around. Um, and this is the nice way again of kind of looking at things and looking at interaction. Uh, of course, there is the bad way again that I keep saying. There's like always two sides. This is a funny GIF, isn't it? There's two sides of a coin. Uh, this was this was a library that I built, GIF links. Uh, this was this was again like playing with hover interactions, and the kind of thought was was like, how can a computer kind of punch you in the face? Uh, so so when you hover these like uh, you know these orange orange links, since the dawn of the internet. Uh, the world has been asking, why are hover interactions so boring? Only recently has a new paradigm arisen to solve these emotionally crippling problems. Designers call them GIF links. <laughs> this is my favorite GIF on the internet, actually. It's like a toy from the 70s, the 60s maybe, before toys were fun, before the Game Boy. <laughs> and he's getting brain damage, I'm sure of it. Uh, trying to look like I'm having a good time. Uh, uh, it's a little known fact, but 9 out of 10 UX specialists <laughs> uh, agree that GIF links provide a rich and more enhanced user experience, uh, which can be tailored specifically for the enjoyment of your audience. Uh, and, and this is kind of like a library that I, that I kind of created just to, just to do this effect. It's nothing really crazy. It's nothing really big. Uh, it's on GitHub with the rest of the stuff. Uh, and this is a kind of a weird one. Like, I got some emails like, Tim, you are actually ruining the internet. You're making the world a worse place. Uh, and I kind of want to print that and just stick it on my wall. Uh, and I've seen that one kind of out in the wild. It's, it's a bit of a funny thing. Um, sometimes I kind of like exploring like the borders and, and, and kind of finding like weird little browser quirks and things that you can... <laughs> what did I say then that was funny? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it can kind of like jump over these little spaces. Uh, and, and so this was, an, this was one. This was a website that I built with the, with the same friend. Oh, there's some nice... Whoa, it's all red and weird. That's okay. Um, so this was like a website for like a beard oil. Uh, and when I kind of go in, I was like, oh, I can put like a little animation in the console. There he is, like he's, he's a nice beard and he's winking. I spent 90% of the dev time on that project building that <laughs> instead, of, instead of the rest of it. And when he was kind of like, Tim, just play around, like do something fun, do something weird. Uh, you know, that's kind of what I did. I also made the mistake of naming all my classes after types of beards. Uh, soul patch, like old Dutch. Uh, that was the biggest mistake I've ever made. It made everything way more confusing. You should compile it into that after. Or, or. It was some good research, though. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of like breaching over into, into another space and kind of playing around. This is another one. Uh, it, it only works on Mac now. Like when I released this, uh, it's like Chrome patched the bug in like three days. And I was like, you're cruel people. I was around for, for weeks before that. But when you, when, you, when you kind of scroll up and down on a Mac or an iOS device, you kind of notice that little spring effect that it has at the top. Uh, and when you're looking in JavaScript, you kind of get a negative number back coming from the scroll position. So I could kind of use that to, when you scroll too far, 
on either side, I could have something little pop up, like a little bit of, a little bit of Grumpy Cat. Uh, I was upset at Chrome. I filed a bug. I was like, guys, you're ruining my fun. Uh, and they were way more serious than I was in that conversation, so it didn't really work out. Um, is there any really reason that we, that we need to create this? Not really, right? There's no, there's no real reason for us to do anything, but we can kind of come in and we can explore a little bit and we can have a good time. Uh, this is a website that I built ages ago, months, uh, years, two years ago, the useless web. Uh, and this was kind of like the website that got me into weird stuff. I, I say like, you know, when someone's like, how long have you been a developer? I'm like, oh, I've been like an unprofessional web developer for three years. Um, that's kind of my answer. And when you press this button, it kind of takes you to these weird, whoa, weird websites. This is, a, this is, I don't know, that's a weird, that's not a fun one. Let's get something else. This is just a purple screen. I think the, the URL is like random color. There we go, let's see. <laughs> well, they're not lying, they're not lying there. Well, let's, let's not go, that had noise. I don't know, this is just a domain. People kind of buy these, buy these URLs and kind of put something weird on there. Cat bounce. This is going to be fun. You know it. <laughs> it's that like 49,000 tweets. I mean, I could just tweet that every single day for the rest of my life and die a happy person. Is that what you're Ooh, that's a funny one. Anyway, I could stay on here forever. It's like a huge time suck. Uh, it's got, it gets like millions of visitors, and everyone stays for about 10 minutes. Uh, and I kind of like calculate it, and it's like over one month it consumes. Oh, it's like years and years of man hours. I feel like I've made a negative dent on the whole economy of the world, uh, which is something I'm very proud of, personally. Uh, this was a fun little library that I built, Elevator JS. Uh, it's kind of weird now because everyone's like, oh, you're the guy that did this like, really simple thing. Uh, but when you kind of scroll down to the, to the bottom and it's like, a, oh, this is going to take you back to the top of the website, it's like... <laughs> play some elevator music. That's some nice thing at the end. I'm convinced this JavaScript library is the key to world peace. Uh, kind of weird. This is something that I was playing around with uh, recently. Nobody likes this. Some, it's always hit and miss. You know, you'll spend a couple of weekends and, and make something, and people are like, oh, this was really great, like the elevator JS, and sometimes you make something and everyone's like, Tim, go away. Uh, uh, and this was one I'm kind of scared to go to. It's a blue screen of death.js, uh, and there's a whole seven tweets there because it's kind of horrific. <laughs> Uh, and you include this when you start developing because like the dev tools have just been getting so good Everything's been getting so easy uh, And whenever any JavaScript error happens on your page, it just wipes out the whole DOM It wipes out the whole head of the page. It spams your console. So you essentially can't find out what the fuck happened uh, I mean and it just looks like a blue screen though That's a nice picture right there uh, hopefully it doesn't crash everything. No, it didn't. That's nice uh, So yeah, you know this is this is kind of like when I'm making this stuff, you don't really like thinking much. I'm just kind of trying to make something fun. I'm kind of repeating this point over and over and over again. But uh, I kind of have no strong thoughts one way or the other. I'm not like uh, big on kind of arguing about these things because it is for our own delight and it's our own platform and we can do uh, whatever we kind of want to do. Uh, I found this function. This is kind of coming, coming towards an end. I, I work at Tumblr and I found this function in the code. I was like, generate dolphins? Like, Stop the presses. I literally stopped the presses. I was like, I'm not doing anything until I understand what this is. <laughs> because it's intriguing. And, and the code, it was like in this far corner of the thing. I'm like kind of reading it through. I'm like, it seems to be generating some kind of dolphin somewhere. Where are the dolphins? Uh, and, and I was kind of on Slack. I was like, oh, there's a generate dolphins function. Uh, where did this come from? I found it eventually in the, in the audio player in Tumblr. When, when a song's finished, there's like a dolphin swimming around. You can kind of see it in the visualizer there. Uh, somebody was like, oh, that's a shark because the tail fin is up and down. I was like, I come from Australia. It's a dolphin. Let me... Uh, but this is kind of, again, it's like the surprise and delight, you know? Don't be afraid to, to have a little fun with what you're doing. Don't be afraid to inject some dolphins into your code, uh, put some weird things, put music to stuff, make things follow the mouse. It doesn't really matter where you go. There's no wrong answer and there's no wrong way to have fun. Uh, and, and kind of like coming to a close, this was the deconstruction for, that, for the generate dolphins when dolphins cry. 
And, and I'm kind of a little bit sad now that everything is kind of done, but cheers, thank you. Cool, cool.